Good evening. Welcome to QUT Web News. The Premier Anna Bly has announced extra funding for Hendra virus research as confirmation came that yet another horse contracted the disease in Queensland overnight. The extra funds are part of a general funding response by Queensland, New South Wales and the Federal Government. The Premier says at the height of this year's Hendra outbreak, more than 100 at-risk horses were being monitored daily. The latest case at Beechmere, north of Brisbane, is the 12th horse to be infected with Hendra in Queensland this year. The horse has since been euthanised. Today, Ms Bly told State Parliament there'd be extra funding for research into the disease. She says the funding will allow research into the virus, including strategies to prevent transmission and the detection and response to incidents. This funding provides real opportunities for Queensland scientists who have already done such excellent research on this dangerous virus to take their work further. The Queensland, New South Wales and federal governments are providing $12 million in funding for Hendra research over the next three years. This will include a $2 million grants program to be established for research into the virus. In federal politics, Queensland's member for Morton, Graham Perrett, created a political storm by threatening to quit politics if there is another leadership change in the Labor Party. Mr Perrett holds one of the most marginal seats in Australia and if he did carry out his threat, the minority Labor government could fall. Labor moved quickly to water down the potential threat. I think uh, Graham's got his day on page one. Uh, the world will move on beyond this morning. The member for Morton felt he had betrayed voters when the Labor caucus removed the then Prime Minister, Kevin Rudd. Mr Perrett says he would not be party to that again. Voters in Mr Perrett's electorate had their own views. Whatever he thinks he feels he should do, in my opinion. How Julia Gillard got into her seat, I throwing Kevin Rudd out, that was pretty disappointing. So really, if she's booted out, I don't really care. Max Kosmala, QUT News. The latest opinion poll won't give the Prime Minister Julia Gillard much comfort. Even though federal Labor has improved its standing slightly, news poll says the opposition has even more reasons to celebrate. Labor has increased its primary vote in the latest news poll, from 26% last month to 29% now. On a two-party preferred vote, Labor has gone up from 42 to 43 per cent. But the opposition is still way ahead. I would say the Prime Minister would be very concerned um, about if these numbers do reflect a loss in confidence in, uh, in Labor to manage. Certainly they'd have to be worried that um, you know, they're not winning on the issues they've chosen to fight on. The latest news poll shows the coalition leading or equaling the government on key issues for the first time. The coalition's also overtaken Labor as the best party to deal with climate change. 31% now support the coalition's climate change stance compared to just 28% for Labor. It's more than just what's happening in climate change. It's about overall um, people's confidence in the government to manage these issues. But that particular one um, seems to have an explanation in that. The poll also shows that voters believe the coalition is better equipped to manage the economy. The parties have equal support for health issues, while Labor leads in education by 3%. The coalition leads Labor on national security issues by 11%. Labor has had a boost regarding asylum seekers from 12% last month to 17%, but the coalition has returned to its record support of 44%. The coalition is winning the homeowners' votes on interest rates at 45%, while Labor is at 26 And Labor remains in the lead on industrial relations at 39% to 35%. Melissa Hunter, QUT News. Cricket Australia is promising to look into allegations about match-fixing by Australian players. But the sports governing body says they're outlandish and of dubious repute. Former journalist Mazur Mahmood has told a British court he posed as a businessman prepared to pay to have a cricket match fixed. The court saw this covert video recorded by Mahmood in which sports agent Mazar Majid boasts about the financial benefits of the illegal activity. He also names Australian players as the biggest abusers when it comes to rigging games. I'm talking about big money can be made, yeah? Majid is seen here accepting £10,000 from Mahmood in exchange for detailed information about a test match against England. And I'll tell you which, which uh, bowl is going to do it and which ball he's going to do it. Cricket Australia has dismissed the allegations against its players but says it will investigate. Elizabeth Mulheron, QUT News. 
The Brisbane City Council opposition says the council should be doing more to protect shoppers and commuters from the increasing costs of parking. The call follows moves by Westfield's Chermside and Carindale stores to charge shoppers to park. As shoppers hear about the new parking fees, they are already starting to park in the streets around Westfield Chermside. Labor's Lord Mayoral candidate Ray Smith says the situation is set to worsen and says the Lord Mayor should be doing more to look after the local commuters and shoppers. The Lord Mayor should be jumping up and down and doing his best to stop Westfield charging for parking. While the council says it's disappointed with Westfield's decision to charge for parking, it has already approved the application. Both shopping centres are close to popular bus stops and have been used by commuters to leave their cars while they catch buses to work. Mr Smith says he's worried that will discourage people from using public transport. The Lord Mayor is allowing Westfield to go ahead and charge for parking and if that stops people using public transport then the net effect is even worse than the effect it's going to have on our shoppers and on our retailers. The decision to introduce paid parking has caused some commuters to say they'll park on nearby streets instead, putting pressure on local traffic and disrupting residents. The $20 a day parking fee has left many shoppers feeling like they've been shortchanged. You come in here to spend money anyway, so why pay for the parking? Well, you've got no choice, you'll have to just pay and uh, be disappointed. That's all you can do, really. The parking scheme is set to begin at Tramside by the end of the month. Megan Lawrence, QUT News. One of Australia's strongest women has conquered the crowds in Brisbane's CBD by single-handedly pulling along a truck that weighed more than six tonnes. The spectacle launched the Brisbane Fitness and Health Expo this morning. She's only 67 kilograms, the average height for a woman, and she did it in heels. Sue Metcalf pulled this truck over 25 metres, wowing crowds in the mall. The athlete is in training for the strongest woman competition in Tennessee next month, and she trains two times a day, six days a week. It certainly is a, a personal achievement and, and pulling six and a half tonnes probably not something that everyone does. So. <laughs> so what does it take to be a strong woman? Oh look I guess it, it's just about being brave I think sometimes. It's about doing things that not everyone else is doing. And it's not just muscles that make women strong. Today the Telstra Businesswoman of the Year Awards acknowledged Queensland's finest female entrepreneurs and perhaps those of tomorrow. Two up-and-comers from Good Shepherd Lutheran College in Noosa were chosen to attend the lunch. It gives me a great insight into the business world today and lets me know yeah, if I was to go into this industry what type of stuff I'd be looking at. It's a good opportunity to learn about the mistakes and the successes of everyone that's been elected. Previous Businesswoman of the Year winner Professor Karen Woolley started the program, bringing regional school students to see firsthand what makes a successful businesswoman but I think the core principles of being passionate about something, uh, persevering, I think now more than ever having a strong ethical backbone to your business and instilling that in your staff is really important. This year's Businesswoman of the Year, the founder of the Hear and Say Centre, says women have leadership qualities that men don't. I think we are able to feel what others are feeling. I think that also that women are true carers. Isabel Rowe, QUT News. Now to sports. The Wallabies are struggling to get back to match-ready fitness for the game against the All Blacks on Sunday. Both teams have had a long list of injuries going into the semi-finals. Questions over Quade Cooper's fitness following last weekend's match have been rejected by the Wallabies coach. He'll be fine. He'll bounce back. He is a, he is a resilient character. Clearly he wouldn't have been happy with his performance, but everybody made mistakes. The two sides will face off in the semi-finals of the World Cup at Eden Park on Sunday night. Robbie Dean says Cooper could start at fullback with Berwick Barnes at 5'8", if Kirtley Beale's hamstring strain doesn't come good. The Queensland Bulls' first game in the Sheffield Shield series is underway. The Bulls lost the toss and were sent into bat and have made a solid start against Victoria. In soccer, the Brisbane Roar are preparing for their clash with Sydney FC on Saturday. Recent Sydney recruit Brett Emerton could be a major threat. I think it's been fantastic that Emo's come back now and same with Harry, you know, it just, just gives a lot of excitement to the league and as players that's what we want. Given their Premier title, the Raw are keen to prove themselves this year, particularly in their next game. Sydney's traditionally a big big club in this league, so, so it's, it's a great challenge for us to go down there as as champions and, and play on their home pitch and hopefully get a good result. Meanwhile, the Australian men's gymnastics team has failed to qualify for the London Olympics. They needed to finish in the top 16 at the World Championships in Tokyo, but fell two places short, ranking 18th. 
Sarah Honan, QUT News. Time now for a look at the weather. It's been quite a warm day around the state, with temperatures hitting around the 26 degree mark in the southeast. From our special time lapse sky cam, we started off with clear skies today until about midday. After that, some medium level cloud cover rolled over the city. Taking a look at the weather around the nation tomorrow, Brisbane should have a late shower with a top of 26. Sydney will be mostly sunny in 20 and Canberra will have some frost before a top of 18 degrees. Melbourne should be mostly cloudy and 19 and further south Hobart may see some rain with a top of 15 degrees. As we head west, Adelaide will be mostly sunny and 21. Perth should have a shower or two with a top of 23 while Darwin will have some late thunder after reaching 34 degrees. That brings you up to date with the weather. And that's all the news we have for now. We'll be back tomorrow with more QUT news. Goodbye. Goodbye.